Oh. Testing, testing, testing. Let's see if we can get a quick little vloggity out of this. Okay. What is up? Yo, 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 and yo. The classic intro is back. What's up, everybody? I am finally back on the Super Duke. I have a 2022 Super Duke 1290R Evo. Now, if you've been following my Instagram where I post frequently, I did sell my 2015 a couple, three years ago. And I picked up this 22 Evo the second it went live. Only two went to my dealership. And I have never made a video on it. This is the third season now. This is coming into the third season that I've owned this motorcycle. And it only has 3,400 kilometers. That's like 2,000 miles. And if you guys watched my channel before, you'll know that is just absolutely not the Snowcat way. Now, 3,400 kilometers is like 1,500 a year because this is coming into the third season. So two years, that is just not the Snowcat way at all. What the hell? So why did that happen? You go from doing 30,000 a year across the bikes to just 1,000. So my first year was a write-off because of an injury. So I was in a cast for most of the summer and bought this brand new bike and just walked past it instead of riding it, which sucked. Then I had like a little ride on it to go back to the hospital, realizing I needed to be recasted because they misdiagnosed me. So I had to go back again. So that summer was gone. Then the next summer I moved away for work and picked up the Tiger. So lots of off-roading. Lots of two-up riding, lots of tours again. And I do have a video coming out with that, but the audio is just ruined. So another problem I had, for now also making videos, is my, um, my camera. I switched from a GoPro 4, which I've had for years, and it worked beautifully. USB mic goes in the side, no media mod, no nothing, and it just worked. And what happens is, is it has auto gain. If you don't know what gain is, it's like the microphone sensitivity, I guess you could kind of describe it as. And when you stop talking, it picks up the bike, it picks up like people talking to you. Then I get the DJI Osmo 3 because I want a new platform. I'm, I'm tired of the, the new GoPros. I keep hearing bad things about them. And so I'm like, you know, I'm going to try DJI. I've had good luck with their drones over the years. And I'm not going to try DJI. And it has like, hey, plug the mic right into the USB-C port and off you go. Well, that's not true. You plug the mic in and it peaks. Like it has this crazy staticking. So the video I'm going to post after this, which is my Seattle trip on the Tiger, the audio is not the best and I apologize for that. I looked into trying to fix it and my Osmo 3 now is old because it came out with the Osmo 4, same problem. So they finally, after me, myself and some others are on the forums talking about the bad microphone, make a little, um, little media mod for it, which they claimed you never needed, but now you need it. So have got this little media thing, it plugs into the side and it lowers the gain so much that you don't have peaking. But the problem is now, I don't even think you can hear the bike. Well, hopefully you can, it's my first test on it. And I, I, I fear you're not gonna hear the bikes like my old GoPro did, but my GoPro 4 is so old now, they're up to what, 12, 11, 13, who knows? I had to retire it. You can't buy batteries anymore for it. It doesn't have the new features. It doesn't go past, you know, 1080p with the 30 frames, 60 frames, slow motion. It maybe goes to 2.7, I forget. But anyways, GoPro 4 old. Got the new DJI. So I'm trying out this new mic adapter. Hopefully my voice is not peaking because it was like staticky. The wind noise just gross. Hopefully this works because the battery life on this thing is insane. It was like two plus hours. Whereas my GoPro 4 barely lasted half an hour, 20 minutes. So always changing batteries. So with all that said, now fast forward we're back on the super duke i want to make a little video about it because i've had it for such a long time barely ridden it and i absolutely love it so i need to make a video about why i love it and especially having so much experience 70,000 kilometers on my old super duke track days touring the whole nines on my old one i think i have a pretty good opinion versus the old versus new and so if you know the super duke history Mine was the pre-facelift of that gen. So it had the old crappy suspension, 
had the crappy frame, no linkage in the back. So if you know motorcycles, the way the rear shock was connected was right to the swing arm, which is like not linear for its movement, blah, blah, blah. Wow, these are brand new homes. Those are big. And long story short is I had some problems and they knew about it. Then they came out with the updated version with a new headlight, which is the same as this headlight. And they fixed some suspension issues, but no linkage. Then they got this bike, which came out. And then they fixed, they had a whole new frame, new new rake and new this and new that and all these suspension tweaks. Then then this bike came out with the electronic suspension. So then this guy came out, the Evo. And so this is back probably during the old silly pandemic where everything went super scarce. So I ended up calling within one second of it going live and I got one of the two coming to my dealer. And the other one was the blue. And I'm not really a big fan of that color, so I had to get this color. It's a little bit louder than I like because my old Super Duke was all black with an orange frame. This thing is all orange, <laughs> including the wheels. And the silver tank is kind of cool. And I absolutely love it. The first things I notice is besides the tech, because I'm from a generation of riders where my first bike had nada, nothing. Like literally zip. Busy moto vlogging. Gotta figure out where the hell we are going. So, the tech is a huge thing because for my generation, there was no tech. Like, you, you turn the bike on and you got a headlight switch. That's the tech. So, this bike for me is like in a whole new world because the 701 I picked up had no tech either. It was a 17, so I had no tech. It had like ABS. And this bike has all the modes. It has the Evo comes with suspension, electronic suspension, dampening, rebound. Then it has the wheelie control, the launch control, the all this stuff. Like it's got some, it's got some stuff, right? But for me, I ride it in the pro mode or whatever it's called, performance mode. Sorry, and I just keep it in like one setting. I do kind of keep the suspension, everything locked in, and I don't really play with any of this, the, like the techie stuff. I leave it all off. So anti wheelies off, launch control is on, but I never really use it. I am the launch control, ABS for the road. The things that really shout out to me from the old model is that it's so skinny. Like the original, the 2015 Super Duke was just a chunky monkey. The tank was high and big, and this tank is so skinny. I actually think the liters are less like the capacity because I have to fill up more. So it's skinnier. It's more nimble. The turn in on the old chunky, <laughs> the old chunky uh, Super Duke was just like you were like wrestling it into a corner. Now you just gotta like light inputs. It just goes in. And then I also find the stability in the corner. I felt not the most confident, even though I could do some great cornering, black lines, knee down, all that jazz. It still wasn't the most confident, inspiring motorcycle, especially with the rear, where it used to like have this weird like weird bounce like and the suspension was set up for my weight and everything but it was just bad shock even really getting it serviced and refilled it's just that linkage was just missing it was just kind of like squirrely in the butt this thing i haven't taken it to a track yet but i really want to but this thing seems way more stable so far for the riding i had to do last year and the the looks of course i think the new frame looks amazing I like, I love the, the new exhaust. I went for the crazy expensive exhaust. So that looks amazing and sounds amazing. Um, so yeah, handling, feel. The tech for me doesn't really matter. It's nice to say it has it, but to me it's not a selling feature. I know for a lot of buyers though it is. I think all the changes are great. I'm having some small issues. It's gone in for a warranty thing for a wiring harness for being unsafe. It, like apparently you could like wear it away and it locks up the rear tire. Apparently also it has, um, thankfully they're being nice and doing it under goodwill because I haven't really been riding it. There's a leak with the oil filler. So typical small KTM problems, but it doesn't leave you stranded, which is nice. And uh, so it's, it's been good and reliable for the 3000K I've had it. And so those are my quick, my quick takes on this thing. Look, suspension, everything is just awesome. And they fixed like, the rear tail light, if anyone knows the 2015, oh my goodness gracious me. 
the rear tail light would like vibrate itself loose and like crack the housing and stuff so that's fixed um, you know the only problem is with this exhaust it's a whole thing to get it installed because you have to you have to like trick the ECU once you put the Akopovich map on it it thinks that it's not street legal which it says off-road only because in some places you can't remove um, emission stuff but it, where I live it's you could take off the whole exhaust if you wanted to obviously there's sound limits and stuff but this thing is quite quiet when you're not on it when you're on it this thing is so loud that's the way KTM tricks the bike into thinking that you can't start it it checks for indicators which you need for street riding so pretty smart on their part for that programming but man is it annoying to get around there we go another bike yes. Now, what else is there? Because this is a big update video, so I better say some more stuff. I ended up selling the 701. I had it for a few years, really enjoyed it, loved to wheelie it, loved to have it, nothing wrong with it, but it's just time to let it go, you know? Once I got the Grom and the Suron, then I got the Tiger. I had five motorcycles at one point and one butt. Can't ride them all. And I love the 701 so much because it was so fun. I, just, I felt like I was taking it over the Super Duke, which is way more bike and it was just kind of sitting there. So I ended up selling the 701. I bought a CBR 300R and that engine is going into the Honda Grom. So look out for a build video for that. Can't wait to get that started. The Honda Grom means it's going from nine horsepower mini bike to 30 horsepower little track machine. So that thing's gonna be so much more fun. And yeah, I could do a 250, I could do a 300 and ride it at the track at these go-kart tracks but I want to be different I want to, like the big 6'2 guy on a on a little Grom so that's that so 701's gone and once I got the Tiger and, and started doing more two up and then the Tiger was like good for trips good for taking the girlfriend out but also for work it had the top cases the side cases I could bring you know my documents and food and a change of clothes and so I felt like I was just driving the Tiger more anyways and I put 50-50s on it started going off-road it was just like so it was just so enjoyable and so I think the 701 started getting ridden less towards the end of its life and I feel like meh time for it to go it was fun to have all my friends sold their supermotos and so I, I was kind of by myself with it and I was like you know what I have my time with it it's okay to let it go and now I'm down to four bikes so the garage sits with the Super Duke the Tiger the Suron and the uh, Honda Grom and the CBR 300R, but I sold the frame and tires already to my buddy. And so all I have left is the engine. So down to four bikes now. So the perfect garage, in my opinion, adventure bike, sport slash street, which is this guy. The Super Duke can do both track days or cruising around the city. Because my old man back won't allow to have a sport bike anymore. And I think the Grom is an awesome weekend warrior slash track night warrior because where I live we can go track nights and Wednesday nights at the cart track so that's great for getting some hardcore riding in to tone down my street riding to get that fill you know for the track and then the Suron is amazing for like wheelies and off-road and just messing around around the house it's electric so it's silent without bugging anyone it's like awesome it's absolutely awesome it really makes it fun to still have that technical control of a light bike 100 pounds so the Suron's not going anywhere so look out for a video on some two electric cycles coming out got one from him away and one from a new company jazz new that one's coming so a couple new electric bicycle reviews also working with motovan this season we're going to be doing some gear reviews we're going to be looking at some entry level to mid level gear because not everyone can afford thousand dollar plus jackets two thousand dollar plus helmets it's just you know when i started out riding i got some entry level stuff too and i think it's time for me to kind of dive into that and help you guys out and i feel like there's a big big gap now from the wave of youtube motor vlogging kind of dying out to this 360 camera set up now where people are just kind of not making a mockery of riding but they're they're just not riding for for riding it, it, does that make sense i don't want my point to get lost in translation because you know i'm not hating on everyone that's doing something different than me but i just don't 
I just don't understand the 360 camera pointed at your open chest, you know, for females or for pointed at guys wearing, you know, silly outfits. Like, it's just not what riding is about. Riding to me is like, you know, the love of the, the sport, the motorcycle, improving your riding, learning. So maybe I need to make some videos on, on riding, I think again, because I see so many things wrong. People holding in clutches, coming down from like fourth gear to zero to a traffic light. Like you've lost, you've lost control of your motorcycle for that duration. To people, you know, doing this weird swerving stuff when they can't really like, it's just so cringe. Like anyone can swerve their bike to like this, this silly like influencer culture. And I hate to say that because I know I kind of am one, but like just like influencing, just, just being a cool biker, like to me it's not really riding. You know, and they, or they post this cringe content on like how to put your bike on a stand. Guys, that gets done 5,000 times a day by everyone that rides, by shops, by mechanics, by people at home, by people storing their motorcycles, by, you know, putting a bike on a stand is not content for Instagram. It's just not. God, I don't like the way when I scroll Instagram sometimes, we need to change that to like, to get back more to like why people get into motorcycles. The freedom of two wheels and enjoying riding and like sharpening your skills and getting better and like really enjoying not like this just want to be cool to say you have a bike or this other category is like it's about like being like the sad biker like what is up with being sad and owning a motorcycle and like this may be my last ride and death and stuff that started coming across my page i'm like what the absolute f also proper shifting i see people just don't know how to shift a motorcycle without the clutch like you should be doing clutchless shifting this is a machine with a gearbox that can be shifted without the clutch like use it it's not a car and people get confused about quick shifting versus clutchless shifting clutchless shifting is not quick shifting quick shifting is a, a device on your motorcycle clutch shifting is you being the quick shifter you don't need to use the clutch on upshifts downshifts i like to rev match downshift you can do clutchless shifting on a downshift but it's just not the best but then you see these arguments in the comments where people don't even know what they're talking about trying to tell people what they're doing wrong or not doing or it's just oh and then you go and give your advice you know after riding all the kilometers i've ridden in my life this guy has no idea what he's doing yeah he wanted to go all the way to the left lane then why are you in the third lane Another one I see on Instagram a lot is taking responsibility. When they have a single vehicle accident, so they just crash themselves or they fall all over or the bike does something and they blame everyone else. It's like, no, you gotta take responsibility. I have crashed so many times now. And you know, I never thought I'd say that back when I was a younger rider thinking I'd never try and crash and have this great run. But most of my crashes have been at the track, to be honest. I have had a couple incidents on the street, of course but not taking responsibility for these, I'm talking single vehicle. When it comes to multi-vehicle, there is a lot of stuff you just don't see on these shots that get uploaded and there's like behind the camera and you know, they'll cut it and not put the before or they won't put the aftermath. Like you, you never really tell with those, but so I'm talking specifically the people that like drop their bike and it's someone else's fault, even though they're the one on the bike controlling it. So you know, where it's too much front brake when their, their wheel is turned or they stab the brake or, you know what I mean? Something like that. So I'm a new rider and, they, and therefore they, it's okay for this to happen. Like, no, it's not okay for this to happen. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the little update. So I know I kind of disappeared for a bit there. I do apologize for that. I've just gotten so busy in life. And you know, when you get older, priorities change. I stopped riding as much focused on my career, I moved for a bit, worked out of town and broke my wrist and all those things along with the camera issues and just a lack of motivation plus the YouTube BS where they stopped promoting channels for that whole adpocalypse thing. My, never, my channel never really came back from that plus trends now, shorts and IG reels and people's attention span just go down. It's just the game has changed so much and I didn't adapt to it quick enough plus you know getting into my 40s now like I'm not young anymore like I've been riding for a long time 14 years you, you, you get older priorities change like I still love riding like I used to but I'm just not really like you know into riding every single day I have other things I want to do now 
and to get content and to be a pop and YouTuber, you gotta like, you gotta post every day. You gotta be on top of your game, and it's just along with that plus my life goals and not wanting to create anymore it just kind of slows down a bit and that's okay and entertainment comes and goes in waves i get the comments sometimes on my instagram oh you fell off you fell off it's like it's like entertainment comes in waves your favorite tv show i bet you is not running anymore you know shows come and go content comes and goes and see it cycles everyone everything comes and goes people get bored of it and they go to the next thing and the next thing happens and that's good but then that next thing, the next thing happens to them too. To have a long, long career in entertainment is very, very rare. It's just the, it's the fact of the fact of the game. But I'm still kicking. I love the subscribers I still have on Instagram. You guys are amazing. Lots of engagement over there, so I appreciate that. But yeah, I need to do a full garage update. And the whole nine. This lane is for me. Can't just push in. Now he's backing up. You know, hopefully this audio comes out because I recorded a lot. Hopefully you can hear the bike because it sounds amazing. Compared to my old Super Duke, this thing sounds like three times better. It's just awesome. And it looks awesome. And it sounds awesome. And I love it. All right, boys and girls, that was an awesome little video. I think I got everything updated. But yes, join me over at Instagram because I still post in there almost, my stories almost every day. Bogging me for why don't you post on YouTube? Well, I did. Here we go, here it is. And uh, we'll see you on the flippy flop. Stoke that out, peace.